Hey, this is Pastor Steele. And I'm Pastor Kelly. And welcome to another edition of Still Strong Podcast. Yes. We're excited. We're going to talk about a gamut of different things on today. Yes, I'm back. I'm so glad to be in the uh, passenger seat with you today. That's Pastor what's Steele. up. I'm glad you're my crime and partner on today. My crime and partner. Did I say that right? You did, no, partner in crime. Forgive me, y'all. I got dyslexic. He does. I've had to... F- if the anointing of God is not on me, I will say, instead of tattoo, I'll say two tat. tat. Matter of fact, my aunts, they still bother me to this day because they say, say two tat just one time. Yeah, you know what? And I've been with him so long. When he does speak to me backwards, I just roll with it because I can translate what he's I'm just saying. glad I don't do it from the pulpit. I'm sure I've done it's it a few times. Rare. Maybe right. like literally one or two times. That's what's up. In 19 but, years, that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that's really good. But nevertheless, the first thing we want to talk about is Reggie Bush. Yes. We are so excited that he got his Heisman Trophy back after 14 years. If yeah. you don't know the story, he was getting paid under the table um, while he was playing at USC. Mm-hmm. And once they found out that he was actually getting paid under the table, they took his Heisman Trophy and they took the banners down from the championships that they won yeah. uh, back there in the uh, early 2000s. But I'm so glad that they restored his trophy because yes. at the end of the day, these a lot of these kids come from the ghetto. They come from uh, a lot of them don't come from a two-parent home. Mm-hmm. You got the grandmother raising them. And Reggie Bush's situation, it was his mother and stepdad raising him. His dad was a security guard, so I'm sure his budget was very limited. <laughs> but nevertheless, you know, these kids, you know, a hey, money, you know, we, we quote it all the time, Ecclesiastics 10 and 19, it says that money answereth all things. Right. And I'm so happy for the kids today yes. because now they're getting paid. You, yep. you got guys getting three, four million, five million dollars a year now. Mm-hmm. Some people don't like it, but um if you look at if you Google any coach in college football, you Google a Nick Saban, yeah. uh Dabo Sweeney at Clemson, I think he was making either seven or eight million a year. And with his shoe contract and all that, he was right around ten million. And he was one of the biggest coaches coming against the kids getting paid. Wow. But I'm thinking you're making money off the backs millions. of these b- millions yeah. off of predominantly black kids. Yes. And then you want to stay, you don't think the kids should get paid? Man, please. You gotta miss me with all that. Well, can I speak on that being a mom please. that had a son that went to a D one school, a uh-huh. full ride scholarship? and um, played for Liberty University, which we're so thankful he was there, started there, to see your child on the football field getting hit week after week. I know it's part of the game, but my son suffered a broken foot that he played on for a full season. He had back injuries, probably about nine concussions when he finally graduated from college. I know what their bodies go through, and I understand why there should be some payout to it. So as a mom, watching over my son's, and thank God he got a free education. He did. He graduated. We're so sure. proud of him. But they're sacrificing their body right, and their time and, you know, their health even to entertain us with football. So I'm all for it. And then you got the coaches running away with all this money. And my son was getting probably – he was getting a stipend of about $1,200 a month. Now, he was living on campus for free in, like, a resort. But that doesn't – but but the coach at the time was living in this big old huge mansion yeah. on the lake. yeah. Okay. Right there, right there in Lynchburg, Virginia. You. Lynchburg, Virginia. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then you got these coaches like Lincoln Riley at USC. He's got his own private jet. What? He's got access to a private jet at any time that he wants it. And when you Google him, I think his contract was maybe six, seven years for a hundred and ten million. And correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody Google it. But it's wow. in the, it's in the hundreds of millions of That's dollars. That's amazing. And then you want to give these kids twelve hundred dollars, and they grandma well, raise they them. They do graduate from college. <laughs> they do get an education, and the hope is Appreciate. that they don't go to the NFL. Appreciate all they're that. They're able to utilize that degree. Appreciate hopefully. all that. But when you watch a Michigan Wolverine right. game, there's right. about a hundred and nine, hundred and ten thousand people, people there at the game, and the kids and they're buying hot dogs and, and popcorn. And, and the drinks. kids, the kids are getting the, getting 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 a twelve hundred dollar stipend. But I say all that to say I'm so glad now that these kids are getting these NIL deals and well, whatnot. Well, in defense, how much do you believe Isaac's education would have been at Liberty? Oh, it was about a hundred uh, and... Something thousand. We, 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 we saved a close to probably $200,000. $200, so, I mean, there was a benefit from going to a school such as that, you know, a D1 school. And I'm so grateful for that. that we that, are. That saved me but, a, but from a mom's standpoint, the physical part... The yeah, mental I, part, I do see the sacrifice. So sure. I'm happy for Reggie Bush. I was always a Reggie Bush fan. For y'all that don't know it, I'm a pastor, but I am a football fan as well. She and is. I love football, love college football. 
And I've been following Reggie Bush, and I was hurt when they took his Heisman. Yeah. Been hoping he got it back, and I'm so thankful that he got it back, and I really am happy for him. I am, too. So sh- kudos to Reggie Bush, Go 14 Reggie Bush. years. Man, we're glad you're getting your trophy back. That's right. All Swerving right. from football to marriage again. Let's do it. We love being married. You know, we um, had some people from our church DM us some questions, and DMing us these questions are um, – they're good questions. And you know, Pastor and I, you're gonna we're real raw and relevant. We don't hold back too much. So um we have one of our elders here, Elder Dale Tucker, my husband's assistant, is gonna be asking us questions. And um, I'm excited to hear what they are. Are you ready, babe? I'm ready. All right. Are husbands and wives equal in marriage? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody out there going to throw me under the bus and guess how much sleep I'm going to lose. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, uh, let me give you my breakdown. She she follows me as I follow Christ. As I follow Christ. Yep. I'm the head of my house. I always talk about how anything with two heads is a freak. Oh, Lord. Now, let me drop this on you. She did not come from my foot or my back. She came from my side. Right. And we do walk side to side. But when it's all said and done, I'm the shot caller in my house. Do I want her opinion? Absolutely. Her her opinion is it trumps everybody else's opinion because she's been sent into my life to be a help me, to help meet the need. Okay. So I value her opinion. Right. And and there are times where I'll say things like, you know what, I was thinking about doing this, but I like your idea better. Right. So men, don't get stuck on stupid and parked on dumb to the point to where you reject your wife's wisdom, if you will. She's been put in your life to be an asset, not a liability. So, and you know, there are times I'll be like, I love that idea. Right. Let's run with that thing. You well, know what I'm you know what? You said it. You said it, Pastor. Help me. And I think a lot of women today have forgotten the real reason and purpose for being married. All right. So if we go back to the Bible, which I know people say times have changed and we're living in 2024, but I believe the Bible. If you don't believe the Bible, you probably won't agree with this. And maybe if you do believe the Bible, you won't. But our purpose, ladies, Mm. as a wife, was to be a helpmate. That's right. The Word of God says in Genesis that when he saw that Adam was by himself, God said it's not good that you should be alone. I'll Mm -hmm. make a woman comparable to him or make make someone comparable to him. Mm -hmm. And then the whole purpose is was to be his helpmate. So when you get married, you become the help. Now, I know ladies that want to hear this, but I'm telling you right now, I am a woman that believes my purpose is to, of course, love God, to love myself, but I'm to help, assist, benefit, aid, come alongside, and uh, be support to my husband. And that could be in any way, how I take care of my home, how I raise my kids, how I take care of him how I make sure that our business is thriving, how I make sure that, you know, we're continuing to move forward in the things of God with plans and goals that we have. I think the problem today with women is that they get married with, they want a man that's already ready made and they don't want to help nobody. They want the man to do for them. They want the man to, which they should. You're a great provider. You're a great provider. But woman of God, what are you doing to, for him? I hear ladies all the time. Well, my if I need some money, he has to have this and that and this and that. Okay, so you're going to come along and help him with that? Or you want to come along with him ready-made? Because I, I believe there's, that's why there's a lot, a lot of single women out there, a lot of divorces too, because they don't realize their main purpose was to help their husband, and they get frustrated because they want equality in a marriage, and there will never be equality in a marriage. It'll never happen. Whether you want it to or not, he's the head, I follow. There's going to be a constant push and pull that goes back to the garden because we lost equality. We lost it. Mm. And even God intended for the man, Adam was here first. We were here second. Sounds like there's an order there. Okay. And when, when, Eve, am, I, am I teaching good? Yes, good. When Eve bit the apple, God said, Adam, what have you done? Because he went to the one that was supposed to be overseeing things. Mm. He went to the leader. My God. He didn't go to the one. See, I'm going to make a lot of people mad here. It's the truth, though. And so then part of the punishment for us women was pain in childbirth, which if you've had a baby, you know that's the truth. My God. Second punishment was we would long for the desire of our husbands, which meant for the authority. We're longing for the authority. We're longing for the equality. Once you move past that and realize, oh, I'm the help here, and you flow in your lane, 
I promise you, your marriage will be thriving and growing. But we got too many different kind of women out there that probably think what I'm saying is ridiculous. But are you married? Have you been for 30 years? But I will say this in some of the ladies' defense, you got a lot of guys out here that ain't worth two quarters. Okay, you understand but what let me I'm tell saying? you this, though. Mm-hmm. I, we're going to be equality in a marriage. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, yeah, that's but, a whole but, different. But to yeah. bring your point, when I met you mm-hmm. at 17 and 18. I wasn't worth a nickel. No. But I saw your potential. <laughs> I was in high school. <laughs> we were in high school. Now, I know our story's different. But even in high school, my husband was not a great person. He was a little bit not of a jerk. Oh, absolutely. Okay? Not even a little. He was just. Yeah. It, but I saw potential in him. I saw that he could be so much better. I saw that there was something great about his name, Reggie Steele. That name just sounds famous. And I knew that, and I, I believed that I wanted to, even though I helped you do your senior paper. We weren't Amen. even married, but I was helping him then. Listen, my teacher took me outside, Mr. Mandel. <laughs> my senior year, he took me outside. He looked at the, um, I had to submit, what was it called, Bell Wolf? It was Beowulf. It and was our I, senior paper. Our senior paper. And he took me outside, and he looked at me, and he laughed at me for probably like two minutes. Yeah. And after he got done laughing, he said, who wrote this paper? And he said, Mr. Conway's daughter wrote this paper, huh? Yeah. I said, absolutely. Which her dad, believe it or not, was, was, a, a, teacher. was a teacher at yep. my high school. Yep. And he started laughing for two more minutes, and he said, I'm just going to go ahead and give you an A because we're just trying to get you out of here. <laughs> That's how I bad said, he well, was. I said, thank you, Mr. Mandel. Here's the Mandel. That was my part. favorite teacher, too. He got an A at his paper. I turned in the same paper at my school, got a B. I'm still mad about that to this day. <laughs> we're talking 1990. It's not right. Oh my God. It's not right. Wow. So anyway. But yeah, so she's been our, helping me ever since. Right, and I don't mind helping. Mm. I don't mind serving. I don't mind giving to my husband. And you know what I get from him? Love, support, all that, but my my job is to help, and so and help means to act, to, to that, aid, to assist. That's what you've been putting yes, that man's life to do. It's the truth. But I know some women are screaming. What about me? I believe your season is coming too. Like my wife and I, we just counseled somebody recently that has like a one, a three, and a five year old, mm-hmm. and we had to kind of tell the wife it's not your season not. right now because she's got all these dreams and visions and. We're like, right now, you need to take care of the babies right. while your husband's doing his thing. And he has his own company. We're like, you need to get behind him in the company and help push him. And I said, now, once these kids hit kindergarten yep. and you're able to afford a nanny, then you can kind of do your own thing. Or the kids are in school. I said, but right now, yep. your season is on Paul's baby. Yeah, it's the truth. So our, is there equality in a marriage? I have to agree with you and say no. All right. All right, next question. What does it mean to be a crown to your Oh, for me, what does it mean to be a crown to your husband? Well, to be a crown to your husband, I believe, is to be someone that is, um, won't embarrass you, Mm. is nice to look at, is not all over the place because a crown should be stable. I think that um, a crown to him should be someone that he is proud of and that, you know, is, is worthy to be praised. Not, of course, in God's sense, but in relational sense and I would hope that I'm a crown to you I hope that I wouldn't embarrass you or you know be loud and obnoxious and you know say things that you know would embarrass you I would oh you've been that. you've been nothing but an asset to me for 33 years 34 this year will be in December will be 34 years yeah. and I even encourage you men that are watching this that are not married make sure that that woman can come alongside of you and be an asset and not a liability. I always say some people have lied about their ability. Right. Because as a man, the first thing you need is respect. I need you to respect me, and I need you to celebrate me. And I believe when we're getting those things like that, man, that marriage can actually, you can endure some seasons, some bad seasons. Right. As long as that man is being respected and being celebrated. Yeah. And then, like, for a crown, he makes sure I get polished. Oh, yeah. He makes sure I'm taken care of. He mm-hmm. makes sure that I, you know, am put away. I love that, you know. Although, I got my nails done yesterday, and you didn't pay for it this time. Yeah, but how, how many bills do you have? Thank you. I have a Target zero. bill. I she have has, an Amazon bill. She has zero bills. I have a... She has uh, no house mortgage. I have, she has no car payment. I have a hair <laughs> bill. <laughs> And normally we go to get our nails done together, and he pays for. I didn't know how much my nails cost. And I write her check every two weeks. Oh, so. see now we're getting it. Yeah, so. I so. earn my check, by the way. You do, you yeah. do. But I sign it. But I earn it by faith. Eh. Uh huh. Okay. 
Here uh-huh. we go. That's true. <laughs> but no. <laughs> See, God some women good. wouldn't be able to handle that conversation right there because mm. they would feel a, a certain they type of like way. They feel like they just got belittled or something. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's my job to take care of it all. Right. And yeah. and I appreciate your faith that you do. Mm-hmm. However, I do work very hard. And I do. I'm not, Absolutely. Sitting, I'm not sitting around expecting for nothing. Yeah, because believe it or not, I almost fired her because she was sitting around for a minute. And I had to be like, listen, you need to get off your I'm not, I'm not, and get to work. You know, she was going through a little season. You know what I'm saying? You know, y'all could y'all yeah. y'all could handle See, us. People, people. <laughs> oh, I got so much to say. <laughs> but I am gonna keep my crown polished. Uh-huh. You know, yes. He did almost man. fire me. Because think of Thessalonians 3 and 10 says, if we don't work, we don't eat. Mm-hmm. And you know, I got a scripture for everything. So right. we believe we working around here. Right. And I Jesus appreciate name. your work ethic. I appreciate yeah. the fact that you, we push and push to make the mm-hmm. ministry all it can be. So I do That's right. appreciate Amen. that. But you know, some women don't want to be corrected like that because it was true. I was just kind of mm-hmm. sitting around and I had to get you know, yeah. a little correction. Bring, I believe correction brings perfection. Yes. And we know perfection in the uh, Greek means maturity. So that constructive criticism is very important in the marriage. And that's why I've always said in order to be healthy, you got to have those, those, uh, uh, you got to talk about the unhealthy stuff. And yeah. So anyway, mm-hmm. I'm still working. He didn't fire me by the way. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that was an interesting conversation. Please ask this four and nine says two is better than one. Right. Yeah. All so right. thank God you want me in the office because some pastors don't want oh, their wife in the office. They're yeah, like, please my, don't come to work. Most of my pastor friends are not trying to pay their wives, number mm-hmm. one. And then number two, they just want to make sure my bath water is ran when I get home and I need some food on the table. Right, and I do that for and you And I too. get it because everybody's dynamic isn't it's the different. same. Because yeah. I used to re- believe that if you didn't work like you and I, I right. thought you were wrong. Well, now, yeah. just because it's different doesn't, doesn't mean it's wrong. wrong. That's right. So do you and we're right. going to do us. So, yeah. So we work well together. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yep. How to effectively communicate issues with your spouse. Do you want me to go first yeah, with you this? Go ahead. I think timing and tone. This is something I've learned many years ago. Because as women, when there's issues, we want to go right away and get to the point and deal with the problem. But I've had to learn in my 30 years of marriage, 33 years with him, that in our relationship, timing and tone works best. Meaning, I have to ask myself, is this the right time to bring this up? Maybe we're in public. Maybe we're at the store. Maybe we're at church. Maybe the kids are around acting crazy. Um, I have to consider all that when my kids are younger. Will my tone be right? Because sometimes when you're frustrated and upset, your tone comes across in a way that won't be received. Now it's an argument mm. over how I said it, not what I said. Wow. I've had to learn that. I'm giving you guys wisdom that will help you. Mm. When something happens that you don't like, you can actually sit back, file it, because you know, women, we keep excellent records, okay? We keep them in our head, wait for it. And I do this, hey, I need to talk to you about something later. And then he knows, okay, now he's not worried about it because he knows when we sit down, we're going to talk like adults. We're not, it's not going to be a screaming match. It's not, he's not like, well, tell me now. It's not like that. He knows, all right, we'll talk about it. And we go on with our day. And usually by the end of the night, I'll bring it up to him or it's not an issue because I let time pass and mm. it's not even a problem anymore because it sorted out itself. I've had to learn that from being married for a long time. So I'm very careful on what I bring to the table as an issue. Hmm. Am I afraid to talk to him? Absolutely not. Am I worried about his response? Of course not. I've learned to hold my peace, to keep my peace and my home. Hmm. Some things don't need to be talked about. Some things don't need to always be discussed. Sometimes I'm tripping on my own feelings. And sometimes I have to realize what is he going through right now that might have caused him to react or say the way something he did at that moment. So there's a lot of dynamics in that, but that's just what I've learned to do. I'm really good about timing. I'm really good about tone. I love it. Yeah, because that's important. You know, um, the Bible says do everything decently and in order. And you've been very great about that. And the blessing, like she mentioned, the 33 years together, the 31 years married, our arguments are very far few in between. I couldn't say that, you know, 10 years ago, no. 15 years ago, mm-hmm. my God in heaven. No. But I thank God that once you start getting in that 20, 25, 30, those, those arguments become very minimal because now you got a really good rhythm, rhythm and a very good understanding of each other. And we know how to go to each other, you know, and, and have those conversations without, you know, somebody popping off, right. you know, we're beyond that now. I mean, for crying out loud, we got four grandkids he so, does the same thing for me, though, too. Don't you think, like, if we need to talk about something? Yeah, I'll be like, hey, I need to holler at you. 
you know, and, and my bank sh- or bank of the day, hey, I need to talk to you. Right. Where it, it, I don't move like that anymore. You know what I'm or saying? Or like how you kind of went off me a little bit on Tuesday about how I changed the graphic that you didn't like. And, oh. And, you know, he kind of was upset about a small change. And you know what I said, ladies? I said, baby, you know what? You're right. I should have asked you first. So, you know, there are times, you know, as a man, I get on edge, you know, when I get to this office, when I get into this office, I go into a zone. I'm trying to get things done, Mm -hmm. you know, so everything that comes out of my mouth might not come out, you know, polite. Soft and sweet. Uh, There you go. Because I'm here. At home, at home, soft and sweet. sweet. But at work, I'm I'm Pastor Steele. He's my boss. At home, I'm Reggie. So that's another thing, too. Women have to learn what role is my man in. If he's in work mode. He might not want a phone call from you saying, what are you doing? You know, because he's in work mode. Work mode. You know, yeah. if if they're, you know, working out or something. and Because I've learned this, men hate to be interrupted. You know, y'all do. If you're uh-huh. if you're doing something and we right. interrupt, it's just a problem. That, again, timing. I'll just right. wait. Yeah, don't don't come to me during a Michigan-Ohio State game. <laughs> They, they, we're, at, we're at the tail end of the foot. We got a couple of football games left. <laughs> babe, take out the trash. <laughs> like, no, don't do that. Wait till the, the game's over. Hey, baby, can you out the trash? Sure. Yeah. All right, halftime. Can you take it out? Sure. I don't even but do halftime. I'm at the point now. I wait till the game is long. It's 21 gone over. 21 with two minutes and 34 seconds. Right. They're in the red zone. You're like, can you take out this trash? <laughs> Like, come on, man. T- timing and tone. Timing and tone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. Did we answer the question good? We, I, think I think so. Did. I think so. Yeah. Absolutely, we are. We're very insensitive. And I think that's something that, as men, we have to really work on. You know, the well, wife. First of all, can I ask you, why do you think men are insensitive? Well, the Bible says in First Peter 3 and 7 that the wife is the weaker vessel. It says to be understanding. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, I think sometimes I'm like, man, here we go. We got to kind of pivot to, the, the, you know, because you guys are that word weaker means you're fragile. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, my God, here we go. And then I got to I got to kind of pivot and shift my whole mindset. Like there's there was a time maybe two years ago, some a, a female said something about you that was very wrong. Mm-hmm. And you were you were you were, you know, going through and I said, bring it in. Give me a hug, baby. It's going to be OK. Mm-hmm. And I hugged you. And then even last week, you cried to me about something. I did. And um, I hugged you. Mm-hmm. Where years ago, I'd have been like, you better get over it. Shoot. Man up. Woman up. Man up. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guy. <laughs> but but over the years, I'm like, come on, baby, give me. And I know how to hug on you and pray with you yeah. when you're going through things. Because, again, 1 Peter 3 and 7, you get a chance to check it out. It says that the wife is the weaker vessel. It says to be understanding. Yes. And you know, then it even goes on. It says that your prayers mm. may not be hindered. Right. You don't want your prayers to ever be hindered because you're not being understanding. But I think it's in our nature to be insensitive. But that's where, as men, we got to step it up. And we got to make sure that we cater to them just like they cater to us. Right. We have to cater to them. Listen, there's not a night that goes by where my food is not made, Mm -hmm. where my drink is not where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So if she's making sure that my clothes are washed and things of that nature, my bed is made, which we do, we share that duty. Yes, we do it together. Whoever gets off the bed last. Whoever gets, that's the, that's you. Yeah, yeah. But you get my pillows wrong. I got to fix the pillows. You know, I got 45 pillows on my bed. (laughs) That part. (laughs) So, but at the end of the day, I, I, if she's doing all of that for me, how much more should I be when she kind of hits a wall mm-hmm. that, you know, as, as, as the head of my house, I have to be sensitive. I can't be insensitive. Right. I think that's so good, baby. I think that men are insensitive because men are logical and women are emotional. Mm. So if I come to you with an emotional problem, men want to fix it. Where a lot of times women don't want you to fix anything. They want you to say, I understand. Or come here, baby, give me a hug. Or why do you feel that way? Because we want the same emotional reaction back. So it comes across as insensitivity because you're like, you know, like when I cried you last week about something. Like you said, well, come on, shake it off, you know. But you bent toward how I was feeling. Right. And then we had a beautiful moment there. And I love that about you. Prayed with you. You prayed with me, encouraged me, and even checked on me later. So I love that. That mm-hmm. you know, you you find that beautiful balance mm-hmm. and being, um, at, you know, and then he came up with an, a, a problem solving idea because men are logical, and his problem solving for me was like, baby, I'm gonna support you, I'm gonna be there for you, yep. and I love that for him. So so, but we had to learn that after 30 years, y'all it was not always like that. Wasn't before it wasn't. we'd always be like, 
because we're both strong. We're both leaders. We're both, you know, um, he's definitely an alpha male. We're both first born in our family. We are both very opinionated and we used to get into it over insensitivity, over power struggle, like all the time. Yeah, you got to remember the police was coming to our house back in the day. Yes. <laughs> and we would, they would come to the door and they'd be like, excuse me, is everything okay in here? And so, I'd crack the door open. Yes, officer, it's fine. The house would be destroyed <laughs> from dishes and cups and plates and pictures. And because our neighbors God. at the apartment were calling us all the time. Man. Oh my God. So, yeah, that's why we always say, if we can make it, my God in heaven. If we can make it. You can make it. You can make it. That's right. All right. Next question. Ooh, the benefits of submission. Well, let me just start by saying. Your bills are getting paid. <laughs> Man. Uh, <laughs> I want to say so much. No, go ahead, baby. Okay. You got the floor. The benefit of submission. <laughs> I struggled with submission a long time early on in our marriage. She did. Because, again, strong. I got this. And you came from a house where there was no male. That's right. So I'd be like, hey, let me quarterback this thing. You just, you know, right. let me run this house. Yeah, right. Um, so mm -hmm. we, again, conflicted a lot against, against submission. The Holy Spirit is what taught me to submit. There's no way you could say you submit to God and not submit to man. There's no way. So if you say, Lord, I submit to you, your will, your way, but can't submit to the husband, you're not submit, submitted to God. So I first submit myself to God first of, God, I want to be the daughter you've created. I want to think like you. I want to love like you. I want to be a woman of God that you've called me to be, which is a lot opposite than what I was, all right? And I had to learn submission. And the, 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 the more I submitted to God, the easier it was to submit, to yield, to back off, to step a little bit back from him to, to him, okay? So I don't want you to think my husband's a tyrant or a, a insecure leader. He's a very secure man. He's secure in his position. I'm secure in my position. Mm -hmm. So because I submit to God, I have no problem telling him, as I did Tuesday, when he kind of went off on me and staff again, I said, baby, you're right. I should have asked you first. That actually was a submitted mm -hmm. response because I should have asked him That's first. Deep. How many times, women, would you go to your husband when, you know, something's going on, and you say, babe, you know what, you're right. I should have talked to you first. There's really no response back. End of discussion. There's no argument. And it all comes with submission. That's so good. That word submission means to yield. It mm -hmm. means to give in. And I think that's where a lot of times why divorce right now is at that 53 yeah. to 56%. Because there's a lot of cases where some women don't want to submit. They won't submit. And let's, let's talk about how a man needs to be submitted, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm submitted to her. I'm yielded to her. When when it's time for me to be sensitive, I yield. Right. I give in. Right. Because I got to give her what she needs mm -hmm. because we're one-two punch. And we got to look out for each other. Right. And, and at the end of the day, you know, we, we made a covenant with one another. Right. Amen. And so for better, for worse. And I want to make sure she's better and not bitter. Mm. You know, so at the end of the day, I believe I believe submission goes both ways mm -hmm. if you really want to talk about it. Absolutely. You know, so. Um, but like I said earlier. You know, I think when it's all said and done, that that husband needs to be the shot caller. He needs to have the the final say. And guess what? That final say might be what she shared with me. That was a better idea because mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, that's a way better idea than what I was thinking. And then I'm, we're gonna run with that because Proverbs eleven fourteen says, "In a multitude yes, a of counsel. counsel, there's safety. Right. But where there's no counsel, the people fall." I even encourage you, men that are out there, before you make a major decision in your life, make sure you bounce that off your wife. Yeah. You know, before you go out there just so you can know the pros and the cons. And, you know, let me say this. If you're a wife out there married and you're, what I'm saying to you is not making any sense, why don't you do this? Um, let let your man lead. You know, let him be a leader. You know, you, you've, you've got to kind of step back and let him lead. You might be like, well, he doesn't lead. Listen, men are natural leaders. They are. And, and if you back off and just let them lead you, it might not be the way you want it to be done. You might not like the way it's done. But if you let him lead, he'll grow in his leadership and he'll become better and better at leading because now you're saying I trust you as leading us. That's good because um, I think that a lot of guys can get, like you mentioned the word insecure mm -hmm. earlier, can be insecure and not comfortable in their own skin. Right. You know, um, so you, that's why you pop off, you go off, 
listen, calm all that down. Right. Be confident in who God has created right. you to be. Mm -hmm. And if the women can get, kind of just get out of the way yes. and let that man find a rhythm. Yep, and, I, and I appreciate that about you because mm -hmm. we got to remember, we got we started dating at 17, 18. We're 52 and 51 now. Yeah. We're 33 years later. Right. So we've gotten our footing. But I like the fact that you took a back seat. Absolutely. And allowed me to be to lead our family. Yes. And during that time, I made some, some mistakes along the way. Sure. Didn't pay certain bills, forgot to. Lights got cut off. We had to go to the Motel 6 and kids had to go swim because I dropped the ball. Yep. But I had to own that, you know, where now, obviously, I've gotten better over the years. That hasn't happened in 20 well, years now. let me just now. go back. That happened because I was doing all the bills at the house. That was kind of our roles within the house. I would pay all the bills. And I would get so frustrated dealing with numbers. And one day the Holy Spirit's like, let your husband do it. And I thought, no, no, he can't. He can't do it. He can't figure it out. We already talked about the dyslexia issue. You know, <laughs> I'm like, he'll get the numbers mixed up. You know, I'm, I'm and I, one day I go, babe, I'm not doing bills anymore. Here you go. And he was like, all right. And he started doing it. But as he admitted, he'd forget. He would maybe not pay one. You know, we did have water cut off because he forgot. Instead of me going off on him or being mad, I'm like, okay, no big deal. How are we going to fix it? And I gave that over to him yep. because I didn't want it. It was too much for me. And one time we had to go to take take, take showers at the, at the, at the gym because yeah. we didn't have water. So we took all of our kids so, to the mountainside yeah. to showers for school. You remember that, huh? Isaac, <laughs> our son Isaac's in here. But but that's happened. that happened twice <laughs> in 33 years. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It was so, the very beginning of the transition. Yeah, it was. And, and, but I let mm -hmm. him lead in that area. Mm -hmm. And now look at us now. Now he's a financial genius leading our church and taking care of things. And, you know, I just love and that. Crunching those numbers back mm -hmm. then are helping me crunch the numbers now, now, you know, for a multi-million dollar business, if you will, you know, still crunching numbers. Laugh. You know, with me, <laughs> let's crunch these numbers. <laughs> right. Yeah. We heard <laughs> the comedian, uh, Dion Cole. Yeah. He was with his wife. They had, the, they were running short financially. He's like, help me crunch these numbers. And we were was dying because we get it. We get we're it. We're like, that's just like, get a pen. Let's crunch these crunch numbers. These numbers. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Inside joke. Nevertheless. Okay. It Ooh. does. I think it does. Grace and mercy runs out in a uh -huh. marriage. Yeah. I think so. For some people, it does. Yeah. I don't think for our marriage, it but, ever will. So I, I'm, people, I'm here for the long haul. I told her when we were teenagers, I want to grow old with her. And I stand on that to today, 33 years later. But I think in some cases, yeah, mercy does run out because in our humanness, if things aren't working out, yeah. there's a relief in quitting. I've watched a we, lot of we people do the, they do the electric slide. We yeah. were close to having grace and mercy run out. Oh, for sure. It was on low. I would say in, in these 33 years, we probably almost called it quits at least probably three three or four times. At least three or four times yeah. that I can remember. Yeah, one time I was like, this ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this just ain't going to work. And I looked at him and said, you know, you're, you're, like, right. you're right. It's yeah. not. Yeah. We've been trying. It's not going to work. Yeah. Grace and mercy had was low. Very low. And um, My God. Man, what? what on you know? fumes. On fumes. But we had to make a decision to fight for our marriage. You know what yeah, I'm saying? And, it, um, you know, it's... Yeah. Because you got to remember, people of God, Mark 3, 25 says a house divided mm -hmm. won't stand. The enemy will try to throw all kind of different things at you to try to get you distracted, for you to lose your focus. Then you start thinking the grass is greener on the other side. Right. I always say water the grass in front of you. Mm -hmm. But and 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 I do believe though there are some cases where some divorces do need to take place. I mean, it happens. God, God never yeah. even had His hand on that. You know what I'm saying? Or or you know? if there's a situation where the person refuses to change, won't go to therapy to change. We you know we did a lot of counseling, y'all, when we were on that low grace where oh, it's yeah. like this is not going to work. Thankfully, we both yep. agreed to go see counseling. a counselor. Yep. We went to a marriage counselor. And that takes a level of vulnerability to do that. There and are some humility. people that are in humility and submission. And submission. Yeah. Because, I mean, thank God you said yes when I found that counselor. Because you could have been like, no, I'm not going to counseling right. with you. But we went, and mm -hmm. that really was a turning point to our marriage staying together because it it hit that bad of a point where, like, it just wasn't going to work. And, um mm -hmm. You know, thank God yep. that we were able to, to navigate through, navigate that, through and, that. And God gives uh -huh. us new mercy every morning. Yeah. So if you start saying, God, if you give me new mercy every morning, you can give me new mercy for my marriage every morning. Mm. That's new good. New mercy every Because love does not keep y'all together. It's not love. Mm -hmm. Mercy. Mercy. Mercy is what keeps a couple together. Giving that person what they, what don't, they don't, don't deserve. deserve. You know, 
And another thing, and we've said it before, it's worth saying again, make sure you pray together every day. Mm -hmm. Listen, before we came to this church this morning, we prayed this morning yes. at our home, you know, before we hit get in our vehicles. Where, because they said that statistically 99% of couples that pray together stay will stay together. together. So you want to make sure you're unified. And Grace, you know, I think too, babe, like when we got married at 18 and 19, um, you told me, I don't think I'd ever be faithful to you the mm -hmm. day, probably a week before we got married. Right. You, you, you know, I, and in high school, he was not faithful and I did not know who I was. So I was okay with that. Didn't bother me as long as he, you know, as long as I was his main, I was fine. All right. So before we got married, he reminded me, I don't know if I'll ever be faithful to you. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll be able to handle that. So when we got married, you know, there was some infidelity, obviously, mm -hmm. that I was able to weather, but I knew that I already had grace for it. Mm. I'm not excusing the behavior. I do not think that this is not an open marriage. I believe commitment matters. I believe covenant matters. I believe faithfulness matters in a marriage. But early on, I had grace for it because I knew what I was getting into. So when I, when I would find out about different affairs in my early 20s, 20, 21 years old, mm -hmm. find out about affairs, I had grace for it already because I walked in knowing what I would need grace for. Mm -hmm. Now, as years go by and you learn who you are in Christ as a woman, you're like, I'm not going to live my life with you doing this, you know, random. Yeah, somewhere thing. you got to turn the corner. You and then, You know, and then you got to know that when you go in, you got to know that person's worse. You got to know, and I, I married his worst, and that's why I had grace for his worst. So I just want to put that out there as well. I had grace for that. But even though I have grace for that, I, that doesn't mean you continue the behavior because right. when you grow in Christ, some of those passions and issues should be able to not be overwhelming in your life. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't overtake your life. Right. You know, and there should be some form of balance and, you know. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you want to be able to tame that area, if you will. You know, and it took time. Yeah, it did. You know, and Isaiah so, forty thirty says young men will utterly fall. fall. And I was up front with her when we got married. I yeah. said, Hey, listen, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to be faithful. Right. I come from a dad with ten kids by six different women. You know, it and wasn't so, his fault, y'all. It's his dad's fault. Yes, it's my dad's fault. Right. Shoot, even Exodus twenty verse five says the <laughs> sins of your forefathers. Will visit. will visit you, My the third boys. and the fourth generation. Yes. And, it, and I got scared. I'll never forget. I was at this place called the Elks Lodge, and oh, I was yeah. shooting dice, and I had this girl with me. And this wasn't guy, me. It wasn't her. We were married, though. But nevertheless, <laughs> <laughs> I had my little chick with me, and the guy, his name was Castro. He said, he said, man, ain't you Alonzo Steele's son? I was like, yeah. He said, man, I remember when he would come back here with different chicks, and I was like, that was a flex. I'm like, yeah, that's what's up. Then this old man was like, is your grandfather Lil Burn still? I said, yeah. And he said, man, I remember when he would come back here with different girls. That scared me. I drove home after I dropped that girl off. I'm like, wait a minute. I said, I don't need this to hit Isaiah, which is my son, right. Isaac and Ira, because mm -hmm. already it's hit three generations. Right. So when he mentioned my grandfather, it wasn't such a flex. So there are things generationally that will come and knock on your door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's up to you, amen, to be able to tame those areas. Because I believe all of us are fighting our daddy's demons. Sure. Straight up. Sure. And that's where the grace came from. And then there was grace, too, because my dad and mom got divorced because my dad was a cheater. And my mom, you know, rightfully divorced. So I thought as a girl, if my mom just would have forgive him, forgiven him, we could they could have stayed together. So it was just a ball of mess for me. Just so you all understand why I tolerated, you know, right. my husband. But I believe I was made for you. So you Absolutely. Know, it just sure. is what it is. Yep. I'm, you know, God is good. Amen. Mm. I think that women should get to a place of being satisfied. I know you are. I believe you well, are. Well, how did you? you answer that question? I, not... Just how I perceive well, you. I think you're satisfied. But you go ahead. You got I, the floor. Okay. I would just say if you've got a woman that is complaining and complaining and complaining and complaining, there could be some truth in that complaint. But if you feel like you're providing all that you can for her, then maybe there's just, it's not enough. You know, women mm. typically complain where they don't feel like they're getting enough. So whether it's, depends on what they like. Maybe you bought them a, good ha a big house, but you're never home. Okay, they don't care about the big house. They want your time. Maybe you take them on a vacation, but it's not where they wanted to go. Well, they didn't. They don't like the mountains. They like the beach. You know, I would say the word of God says, "Why should a living man complain?" That's right. 
But I'll say this to the woman that's complaining. The Word of God says that it's better for a, a man to live on a hot tin roof My God. than with a nagging woman. Jesus. And if you're nagging and nagging and nagging, I promise you, he will find a woman mm. that will not nag him. My God. Then we got another problem. My God. That'll preach. And what would that problem be? My God. That man, just give that man some peace. No, some, don't. Some no, pasta. no, please, Jesus. <laughs> Not the three P's. <laughs> no, but but it's true, though. I mean, <laughs> nag, nag, complain. Yeah. You know, nobody wants to come home to that. Mm -hmm. And, you know. It sounds like you got to talk about the elephant in the room. Well. There needs to be, obviously, the marriage is unhealthy. Yeah. In order for it to get healthy, you got to have that conversation. And then, you know, you have to bend. There's, what's the word? Compromise, compromise. in marriage. Yeah. There has, there's compromise. Like her and I, I think one of the things that has kept us going is communication. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we date every week. We do. You know, we have good sex. I yes, mean, we're we doing do. all of that. You know what I'm saying? So there's certain things that need to pop off in order for that marriage to be healthy. And that's why I said it earlier, divorce rate right now is between 53 and 56 percent. You know, and we're trying to do our best to try to stop as many casualties as we can. We were even talking with our staff right now. We got probably... A couple of people that we know in our church was a church of 10,000 that yeah. claim us mm -hmm. that are going through divorce. There could be potentially more. more, but we're very aware of two of those that are going on right now. And we do what we can. I can remember years ago, uh, my staff came to me and wanted to start a divorce care ministry. And I said, absolutely not, mm -hmm. because everybody in this church is going to stay married. <laughs> but then over the years, everybody. I'm like, uh, did somebody mention a divorce care ministry? I think we need to start that yes. ASAP. You know what I'm and saying? And there's some couples like, you know, you guys, you probably should, <laughs> yeah. you know, part after, after, ways. Yeah, after a few meetings, I said, yeah, you know, and then I, I told her mom, hey, I'm putting you over divorce care because you've been divorced not one time but two times. And we okay. love, I love my mother-in-law. love my mama. But she done a phenomenal job helping those people land back on their feet, praise God. Because it takes healing yeah. once there's a tearing away, which is the real meaning right. of divorce. But, mm -hmm. you know, I just think that. Um, a, a, a complaining woman, also the Holy Spirit gave me this, comes from a place of discontentment mm. where you're just not content with what God's given you. Wow. And it's like, be That's content. Good. You have a home. You've got a wow. family. You've got a husband. You've right. got children. Like, be content in what mm. God has given you, and then you won't look at what the man's not giving you. So mm. that's what I that always, preach. you know, I, I think that's why I don't. That's complain. Good. Was, I no. was never been a complainer. Very minimal. No. Yeah, that's not that's not our. I testimony. think when your time was off, you know, when you were at church a lot early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, I just wanted your time. But early on, I didn't have a staff, so I had to do what I had to do. I was here from eight thirty morning, eight thirty at night, making it happen until we were able to hire staff. Now yeah. I'll be trying to get out of here by one, two o'clock at the latest. Sure. Yeah, times have changed. We're twenty years later. Amen. <laughs> I, absolutely, you're good. Like. Our, most of our marriage, she yeah. made more money than me. Let me yeah. um, I'll let you chime in, but yeah. but I, I, I man, I hate that when men start feeling like they're they're, they're they they kind of dumb themselves down right. when they feel like they don't make as much money. I think that's an ego, that's a pride thing. That did, it, it never bothered me that she made mm -hmm. more money than me. And it wasn't much, but she made more money than me. I did. And the thing is this. You know, we're one flesh. Right. So that money was going in a one pot anyway. Right. Matter of fact, she would give her check to me because back then I controlled the finances. Oh, you're about to get people upset. Oh, and it wasn't like I put a demand on her, but no, that's just, that's just what, that was I the did. culture. Gave she me, gave me her whole check. I signed it over to And him. I said, we paid these bills. This is what you got for you. This is what I got for me. Yep. This is what we got for groceries. Yep. Now we kind of move a little different now. She's got her own account. I got my own account. And then we have a joint account now. Right. You know, times have changed over the years, but... Yeah, uh, I would encourage you men that are watching this just because you should be doing cartwheels that the bills is getting paid. <laughs> right. Oh, my soul. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah. Focusing on the wrong you thing. Are, you are a team. You're a team. We're working that, together. And there's no I in team. Yeah, what did we make? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like, come on. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, but so, I want to hear your two well, cents on that. because I did for so many years. Yeah. I, I made more money than you. Here's the thing. I never made him feel like like he was less than a man. Never. I never belittled him as a man. I never threw it in his face that I was making more money because, like you said, we're a team. We're just trying we're, to feed these kids. We're trying to feed the kids. Five. Get shoes every other payday. Trying maybe. to keep people in in, in, in in almost said karate. They never did karate. karate. Try to you know? keep people in Pop Warner. How about this? Try trying to keep to get, people in basketball, trying to get gas. baseball. Trying to get gas. Yes. I remember we were so broke one year. 
This is in 2004. <laughs> we were so broke, I spent my last $5, went inside, got the gas, paid for the gas, got the car, <laughs> left, never pumped the gas. He was so broke, he couldn't pay I attention. I couldn't pay attention. I pulled back up to the house, went in there, went laid down, and said, you know what? I forgot. <laughs> and then I didn't even get back in the car. I was like, bump it. We were just defeated. I was just like, was I ain't just... even. I'm not even going to go back in the circle. Can't explain it. It was a low point. That I spent five, gave y'all $5. I never put it in my tank. I just went on the change hunt later that day. Right. Just so I could get to work the next day. Yes. I was like, bump it. That's how broke we were. So I think that's why part of the reason why it didn't bother us because we just like, hey, listen, we got two paychecks. That's right. Let's pay these bills. Right. Make sure everybody can eat. Get these kids in Pop Warner. I mean, it was so bad one year. And I'm grateful for one of my friends, Jimmy Armstrong yeah. and Roxanne Armstrong. They called me one day because they were like, hey, man, we noticed the kids aren't playing Pop Warner and cheering this year. I said, man, we can't swing it financially. Mm -hmm. We're just not in the place, man. We're barely able to keep food on the table. He said, well, man, I'm going to come by right now and drop you off a blank check so you can put your kids yeah. and Pop Warner and cheer. That's right. And, man, I was that came up to almost 700 bucks. Right. And to this day, you know, when he ran into some trouble years after that, you know, I looked out for you him. You believe it. Looked out for his wife That's as right. well. And that yeah. matter of fact. And we love their family. And, unfortunately, they're not married anymore, but his wife attends here. Yeah. And she was recently in the hospital, and I was able to go see her yeah. and pray with her. That's right. and, and she's been a faithful, faithful. ten toes down member yeah. here at Kingdom. But those people wrote us a blank check so that our kids can play Pop Warner and be in cheer that year. Yeah. And I love Luke six thirty eight. He said, "I will cause mm, man yeah. to yes. give unto your bosom." Because yes. one thing we never stop doing is tithing and giving all for Right. That that's the one. That was that was before our top. mortgage. That you was before everything. It. We weren't even pastors at the time. Mm -mm. You know, so no. yeah, so we didn't we didn't it. we didn't play when it came to that. So yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. I got two more, but this one's good. We're getting questions. My husband is self is a selfish lover. He leaves me unsatisfied while he pursues. Oh Lord. I don't want to cheat, but what does that girl to do? She Whoa. she she needs to talk to him and let her know him? let him know that before you get your due, I need to get my due. <laughs> At the end of the day, bro, you got to get her off. Straight up. I mean. Well, amen. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Name. <laughs> yeah, you can't. You, in you, Jesus' name. Yeah, man. You got you to hold back, man. And I get it. I was like that probably in my teenage years and in my 20, early 20s. But then after a while, she was like, baby, I'm not. And I'm like, okay, I got you. That was one conversation. <laughs> but but you know what? We you know what had to have that conversation. Because yeah. as yeah. you get older, yeah, it's one you realize, okay, there's more to this than what we're doing. Right. And, you know, early, early 20s. And so yeah. it's like, okay, well, you yeah. know. Yeah, and that woman of God, have that conversation with him and let him know you're not being satisfied that he got to step up his game. Don't please don't step out on that, brother. Yeah, don't do in that. In Jesus' name. Don't do that. But you need to have a conversation with him and let him know that he needs to hold off until you get yours. And then once, you know, you give him the green light <laughs> and you go ahead and <laughs> do what you do. You know, it's funny. Get your do. <laughs> you know what's funny about this conversation? First of all, I think this should be talked about more in church, number one, because God invented sex. Yeah. God created it. He made all the parts fit, all the nerve endings and everything. That was all God's design. And I love the fact that we can love Jesus, be holy in our relationship, but still be nasty. Amen. That's a, and it's blessed. And, and, and the Bible says to let your wife's breasts yes. satisfy you at, at all, all times. times. Even the Song of Solomon 4 and 16 it says, and Solomon blew into her garden. Whoa. So there's a certain things that people don't want to talk about in church. I just recently came under some heat, <laughs> you know, because I said something <laughs> on Sunday morning. You didn't even you know, say it, baby. I didn't even say it. And, and I mean, were, you, you, people you told were, people to figure it out. People were falling out by yeah. it. But, but the blessing was that 80% of the people were on my side. Yes. And you had the 20% that were holier than thou that can walk on water. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like. And that are probably the ones that are satisfying their wife. That part, you know. So, yeah. You know, and I think if because God invented that and God created it, there's there's a beauty in it. So, mm -hmm. and I had to learn that there's a really good book that I read years ago called The Act of Marriage um, by Tim LaHaye and his mm -hmm. wife. And it's Act A C T of Marriage. It's biblically based and it talks about everything in marriage, like everything you, and, and sex, everything you could think about that could happen in the marital bed. They go through everything. 
and about how beautiful it is in the sight of God. So, um, you know, there could be some maybe inhibitions with people that are saved that think we can't do that anymore. Because remember, I went through that stage when I was really, 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 really super saved. And I'm like, babe, I don't want to have the lights on because I don't want God to see me this way. And, I had you know. to be like, listen, we got to you got to stop tripping. Yeah. yeah, back then, I'm like, you, you're too holy for me. Right. <laughs> and I and I like the fact that she told the women at yes. our church, you need to be a holy hoe. Yes. There's a time to be holy, but then we need. there's a time when you need to be a hoe. That's really good. In that bedroom. Amen. Amen. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. At all. So, um, yep. I'm glad I'm the your Bible holy says that The Bible says that Abraham ministered. Minister to Sarah. It's a full time so, ministry. It's a ministry. And you got you, and don't be selfish. You know, right. maybe there's medical issues. Maybe people get older. Because you know, I had him when he was, you know, 18. Now I got him at 52. You know, it's different. You ain't getting it as much. I mean, Amen. 18 is three, four <laughs> times a day. You go, you two, three times a week now. Which is great. Yeah, you're not getting that. that yeah, after, yeah. 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 You get this age, you like, hey, we, we gotta do that right now. Quickly, hurry. And, Right. <laughs> yes. I love this. Well, what's the next one? Why is date night so important in marriage? And can you give us some date night ideas on a budget? Oh, that's good. Mm. Date night is so important in marriage because that's the time where you carve out moments to be together. That's why I think it's important. And I also think date night should be a night where you dress up, get ready, wear something nice, do your hair, do your makeup. It shouldn't be like a run to t- you, if it is a run to Taco Bell, look nice. My husband and I, we went to date night to Popeye's probably like maybe a few months ago. Remember we went? Mm-hmm. And we laughed at each other because, you know, we didn't post it or whatever. But we probably should have because we just didn't. We just figured we're going to go to Popeye's. And and then even like we because we, we're empty nesters, we went on a date on a, it was a Monday. I'm yeah. sorry. Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Yeah. And I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money on that Thursday. So I told her. Um, we were in the Westgate area, yeah. not Westgate area, um, over in the Blue Martini. Yeah, yeah. Um, d- high, d- uh, people high don't know. Street area. High Street, yeah. And I had her go get me a bowl from. Uh, the Coyote Bowl or something. Yeah, it's a little, like $8, you know, $9, Asian $12 bowl. or whatever. And I was considerate because he had taken me out two nights in a row. Right, and I'm like, I just don't want to spend a whole bunch of Benjamins. So yeah. I told her, hey, go get me a little bowl. Mm-hmm. And she did. Came back with hers. We sat down, had that. Yep. Watched. Uh, we were out, you know, at a different other uh, facility and had a great time. <laughs> yep. You know, and the, the budget wise, you it, a date night can be what you make it. You can do a date night at home. I suggested this to women. If you've got a lot of kids, not a babysitter, put those kids to bed. Stay up late. I think women get so into their sleep. You know, like they just want to go to sleep. Baby, you know it. When I had them grandkids this past two days or whatever, right. I was like, whoo, can't wait to get in the bed because they wear you out. I get it. But make yourself stay up and do a date night at the house. Make dinner at home. Eat outside. Put a candle up. You know, take a bath together. Take a shower together. Give each other massages. You know, put a blanket out in front of your TV and watch TV or a movie, you know, on the floor. You know, do, you can do different things that are not yep. that are cost effective if you can't do yeah. grand, great things. Yep. Back in the day, I wouldn't suggest this, but... Uh-oh. When our kids were oh, gosh. very underage, probably eight <laughs> under, and under, we yeah. would lock the door and we would go to Hil- Filiberto's, Filiberto's and just leave them at night. Leave them there. You know, we go spend an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. You know, we were on the budget, so we talking one taco each and yep. a cup of water. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? While their kids were home but, asleep, by faith. But that was our it, by faith. <laughs> you know, so I wouldn't encourage Don't that. Don't do that. But those are some of the different things that we did. Because we, 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 didn't, we didn't just start doing this date night. Just, no. You know, we've been no. doing this forever. Yeah. And then we would go and split a gram slam at, at Denny's. Denny's. Yeah, and we'd get water with lemon and put yep. sugar and make our own lemonade. We would yep. do that. We sure We did. would, I mean, so you don't have to have a whole bunch of money to make it happen. And back then, gram slam was about, when it was three ninety nine. we would see that. We were like, oh, well, well, time to go. We know where we're going to be on Friday night. Absolutely. We yeah. would do that. So, because so, our budget was very minimal. Mm-hmm. I mean, because by the time we got done tithing and giving an offering and paying our bills, that was it. Things were tight. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But we still were able to. You know, take some 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 of the money that we had left over, and mm-hmm. do little things like that at Filiberto's and at Denny's and IHOP, and then plan things too. If you plan it, and we did the backyard, we did the backyard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you say, listen, I'm gonna save, you know, five dollars a week for you know it together for six weeks. After six weeks, we can go to a restaurant and have dinner. If you plan, you we we do what we want to do, right? We 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 buy what we want to buy. You know, if you plan it out. 
you can schedule it out and say, I'm working overtime for this. And I used to do that all the time. Babe, I'd work overtime for things. Oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. I remember I worked overtime for his birthday. You turned 30. 30. Yep. And 30 I worked overtime old. to take him to Don and Charlie's. Yeah. That was a big deal man. back then. They and, closed it. And but I'm, Yeah, and I'm going to share this before we close out, man. It, it, that was so beautiful. That was, I can't believe that was 22 years ago. Jesus. I was 30, 22 years ago. I'm 52 now. And I just got off work. I was working full time at another ministry. Yeah. And I came home and I opened the door and saw these roses. Yeah. And then that's the roses led all the way to my bed, all the way through mm -hmm. the hallway to my bed. And then I had a suit on the bed. Yeah. And my water was ran. Yeah. And yeah. when I talk about we were so broke back then, we couldn't even pay attention. Right. And so, but we went to Don and Charlie's that night. That was so Scott's special. Night. We had such a great time. Like we we yeah. wore suits and dresses. That's yeah. how special it was to celebrate his 30th birthday. Yeah. And uh, your mom kept the kids. I surprised you. Yeah, that was amazing. But surprise. I worked overtime to make that happen yeah. for him for his 30th because I yeah. felt it was important. And, and he's I'm, done the same stuff yeah. for me. I'm grateful. We've had to grind to get to where we are. So yeah. I want to encourage you to watch watching. If you're married, man, keep grinding. Keep, keep grinding. Fight, fight for your marriage. You know, if, if, it's, if, if you've hit a wall, man, get some therapy. Like I said earlier, Proverbs 11 and, and 14 says, in a multitude of counsel, mm -hmm. their safety. You know, find somebody that can pour into you so your grace and mercy level will rise. That'll preach. Because that's what we did. We found a counselor yeah. that poured into us so our grace and mercy that's level would rise. would rise. And I'm so thankful to God because, y'all, we were close to divorcing. Yeah. Like, close. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking, how am I going to tell these people at church Sunday? Yeah. But there's only God. one. There's only one couple that I know right now that mm -hmm. we graduated with. That's that, still that, married. She hung out with a lot of my friends our senior year. Yeah. They're all divorced mm -hmm. except one couple. One. My friend Chris Rios yep. and Norma Rios. Outside of that, everybody else. They done, couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. But if you get somebody that will pour into you, that will help you raise your grace and mercy level. Like even with us, you know, we're pastors. We have a church here. I encourage you come to church. You know, we, we have date night schedule here at the church. We've got great uh, marital counselors here yep. at the church. We have um, events for married couples. We teach on family twice a year. Maybe you need to start coming into the house of God. Have somebody fill you up spiritually, so your grace and mercy level will rise. Gotta preach what you don't. What you don't get by revelation. Yep. You get by association. That's right. Well, listen. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Still Strong Podcast. Yes. Subscribe. Subscribe. Make sure you catch us next Share week. Share it with somebody. Please. We're praying for you. We love you. God, God bless. bless.